Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series for December 10th. Uh, today we have Scott Pulsini, uh, and he's going to be trading live futures order flow. Uh, for those of you who are guests in here uh, and don't attend the uh, regular webinars, uh, you know, this is the Pro Trader webinar series. However, it's a little bit of a change. Uh, Scott uh, and Jay Trader, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, we have live trading in our daily advanced webinars. This is part of the Bookmap education that you get when you subscribe to Bookmap. Okay, so uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's for any subscriber right now uh, or Global Global Plus subscribers uh, until the end of the year, it is free. After that, um, it'll be for Global Plus sur uh, subscribers. All right, so uh, and the, all, all of these here's what you get as education there's an educational course uh you have the daily advanced webinars monday through friday uh and it's three days a week it's like the uh webinars we've always had they're forward looking and uh, we read the order flow and give insight to where price is going to go and it's all based on supporting that educational course so you can apply what you've learned and you can ask questions uh due to uh lots of requests uh, we added live trading. Uh, now we have uh, two days a week, uh, Jay Trader and Scott, uh, and they, they're going to take live positions uh, and, and show how they use Bookmap and moreover, how they manage their trades. What were those, their decision uh, making uh, uh, processes here? What kind of insights did they glean from the order flow in Bookmap? All right. So, uh, we're just going to do a regular webinar here today, but uh, you know, you a lot of people have asked for uh, requested uh, uh, access to this, so we have it for you here today uh, and yesterday. All right. So now I need to go through a few different things. Um, risk disclosure, um, general disclosure here: all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance uh, we're pretty close but uh, our simulator is quite good um, it does put you in the queue okay so it gets pretty close to it but Nonetheless, like even one contract is going to, you know, it, it could potentially change, uh, uh, you know, the, the order flow or outcome. Anyway, uh, risk disclosure, trading futures, equities and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You can also read through the hypothetical performance disclosure here uh, as well. And then let's just jump in and introduce Scott for those of you who don't know him. Uh, he's been trading for over 20 years. Um, and during the years of 2005 or 2002 to 2005, Scott was responsible for trading about 10% of the S&P E-mini volume. An incredible trader here, uh, incredible depth, incredible experience. Uh, I mean, just trading hundreds, of, you know, or I don't know, I mean, at a time, clips, hundreds of contracts uh, and, um, uh, you know, massive positions here. Uh, Scott now focuses his trading on both equities and futures. He's an expert scalper and has an innate ability to quickly read the order flow and volume within the price patterns. Uh, and then here is Scott's uh, information here. If you want to reach out uh, to Scott, if he's an, he's an educator as well. He's got a website, email, Twitter. He's got a trading room at uh, that, that he uh, uh, other days of the week uh, at wetradedesk.com. Um, special offers from Bookmap, okay? Uh, for our educator partners, you can click on this link here. Uh, and there's a special longer term deals that are not offered from the Bookmap website. You can also see Scott's course here. Okay, it's on our Bookmap marketplace. Don't worry, I'll put all these links into the chat for you um, and you can click on them there and, and go to um, uh, view some of the deals here. All right, so uh, the special deal here though is from, from Scott is this is only for Bookmap, not a combo package. Okay, it's only for a, a deal on the software of the platform. All right, the course here is separate uh, and uh, you can click on this and uh, find out more about it or just reach out to Scott, you know, at scott, scott at scottpulcinitrader.com. 
Uh, one more thing I'm going to be putting into the chat is a discount of 50% off of the first month of Global and Global Plus. Okay, this, there's a coupon code I'm going to put into the chat for you. If you're interested in trying Bookmap for the first month, you're new here, um, you can use this code and you can get 50% off for that first month. All right, it's just for the software. No, no data is included in that either. Okay, it's just just the platform. Uh, we're going to um, uh, offer this um, next week as well. Uh, but the idea here was those that are attending these webinars and want to try Bookmap right now, you've got the code and you can get the discount now. All right. So without further ado, let me turn it over to Scott and uh, let him take it away. Everybody, hear me? Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, let's get my handy dandy webcam going so everyone can see my awesome new screens. Those are allowing me to put multiple book maps. Wow, those do look awesome. Those look awesome. <laughs> hey. Thank look you. at that. Um, so I'm going to, why don't I see the nice. screen share? I think you got a, what screen do you guys see? Or do you see, I don't, I can't see the. No, no, no screen right oh, now, I just your web, I got webcam. It. All right, so I'm long crew right now. I'll show you why. Um, got a little late to the party because I wasn't at for the original breakout, but I'll show you in a second if I can find my screen. Let's see here. All right. <clears throat> there you go, we, we see it now. Okay, cool. You see, see the crude? Yep. Okay. Well, of course, I can't. These, some of these monitors are so old, I can't uh, do anything on them. I'm going to have to switch screens again. Hold on a second. Let me move this over here. I'll see you guys. It's just really strange. I like, go to drag the book map, and like nothing will happen on certain screens. It's very odd. So we'll go over here. Okay, do you got the crude now? Yes. Okay. All right, so crude's in full full out breakout mode. Um, let me show you longer term first. So this is exactly how I trade, right? I, you know, in the morning I'll break down these uh, charts. So I draw these zones. These zones are important areas, um, inflection areas where things happen. Like you can see over here. Nice. Get my little drawer guy. You know, this is where this whole Move started down, things like that, right? So um, some of these go back further, but like as we're coming into these zones now, these are important zones that we may stop. So I'll get in a little bit into that. But the bottom line is we are um, breaking out of a smaller term balance area that was on top of a large term uh, balance area. And we're in full breakout mode and we just broke through this last zone here, which was the this off here. Um, this is the last stand before this big breakdown, this big gap down. So we got through this zone here. We're breaking out of here. So I got long. So I look at that. <clears throat> we're pretty extended. Um, so I was a little nervous to put this one on. But I mean, as you can see, this is the five minute, right? This is pretty extended. But we're breaking out, um, you know, that big balance area. And then what I do is I drill down to see for volume confirmation, right? So so this is coming back right now. This actually stopped right at the tip of that zone. So I may, if this comes back up to the absorption, which I'll show you, see how it stopped right there. Um, I may cover a couple of these, but you can see the buyers. So this is the new indicator that Bookmap has. Um, it's called the absorption indicator, where it's showing you, it's kind of like an iceberg, um, where it's showing you that the, there's big passive orders coming in the book. They're not going to the market. They're putting them in as resting orders and they're getting filled on those. So um, I have my settings for the absorption for crude at um, <clears throat> 150. And so white is the passive buyer's color, black is the passive seller's color. So all that means is the aggressors were the sellers here, as you can see by these bubbles, and you can see the big orders, 150 or more were taking those orders, right? So it's kind of like an iceberg when they run into an iceberg 
if you guys are familiar with icebergs, it's the same type of thought process, but not all traders use icebergs, right? Icebergs are more for the big, the big houses, the big money, um, in my experience. So I, you know, when I was the big trader, I never used icebergs. I would just throw in orders at, as it would come down, right? So I would have like a 300 lot sitting here and they would take it and I'd put it, put another 300 lot in and they take it and I put another 300 lot in. So it was like a, kind of like a battle, right? So this is what this is telling you. So if this comes back up to this absorption, I'm going to get out of a couple of these. It's, you know, obviously it's a tiny profit. Um, I'm going to show you why I got into this, but there was an area much earlier I could have gotten in if I was in front of my computer at that time. Um, so I want to see this blow through back through this absorption uh, or I'm going to, if I see any red come in, I'm going to get out of half. Um, and then I'll, then I'll just leave this stop in for now, but I'm going to show you my thinking or what I, why I put this trade on to begin with. I just want to see how this transacts right here. Um, And so nice. All right, so I'm going to get out of, give this one more second here, see what happens. So I'm going to show you guys some equity stuff too. All right. So I'm going to change this. Okay, so the reason I'm getting out of there, like I showed you, is that uh, that zone that I have drawn from prior. This is back in March, right? So the, let me zoom in on this. So these zones are basically very important areas, like I said, and this is how I determine, you know, I try to trade the best I can only in important zones and decide whether they're going to be, um, you know, if I'm going to fade the zone or if it's going to blow through the zone type of thing. But you can see here, you know, these are important areas that we may stall at right here. It doesn't mean we're not bullish. It doesn't mean I'm going to sell because we're breaking out of that longer term balance area. But I will cover positions, you know, in a, so I'm not shorting anything because of the long term bullishness right now. Right. We broke out of this balance area. We broke out of this balance area. I will cover and then wait for pullbacks um, if this can't get through this area right now. But this was an area. Um, you can see that we broke down from um, we're right here right now 47.23 so this is like the start of this big breakdown that led to that huge sell-off that you remember everybody got smoked um, or not everybody a lot of people got smoked when the crude went negative uh, negative $38 at that guys with one loss were losing like $25,000 that, that could not have been fun I'm glad I was not involved in that um, so anyway, let me pull this back up and I'll cover. Okay, so what happened here? This was a stop and hold setup. This is this is one of my um, one of my five uh, SI the stop indicator tracker setups that I use uh, that I base my course on. Uh, high probability setups, and they're all based on my personal experiences of big, you know, being a big time scalper in the past. You know, knowing the the tendencies of the big money um, and the dumb money, right? So this was a stop run which we usually call, so it's 177. So, and I have certain thresholds for each product as we'll see, for certain products as we'll see as I, you know, get into this. But for crude, anything over, um, like over 100 is important, right? So if I see a stop run, that's like, this is a good example, 70, I don't pay attention to it, right? But if I see it over 100, that, you know, alerts me, okay, now I wanna be paying attention. So the usual, um, Stop runs are usually the retail trader that I call dumb money, right? And don't be offended because I'm a retail trader now as well. And they say that every webinar. It's just, we're not as informed as the the big money, right? The big funds, the banks, we're just, we're just not, right? So that's why I call it the dumb money. So this is usually a, a, a good sign where, or a good setup where you get the, the, the dumb money puke and there's nothing behind it. And then it just, it just basically stops in its tracks, right? So, my other setup is a stop and hold, and this is what this was. Um, again, when you get a stop run, and we drew the area that it started and stopped, and you can see a little bit of absorption went a little bit below. Um, and some of these standard trade markets will go a little bit outside of it, but then get back in, right? So this was the stop run here. I drew the, the zone. And then once you can see, I got in here right before the webinar, but I, I got out, I scratched it. I just, because I was going to try to get in with you guys watching. Um, but this is this is the more conservative entry as far as you want to see it break out of the zone. If you if you if you get in in the zone, you don't really know what it is. It could be 
a stop and hold or it could be a dumb and dumber, right? So you're being more mm -hmm. aggressive getting in here. Yeah, you have to risk less, but you don't really know what it is. I knew for the context that we were breaking out, so I got a little aggressive in here, but then I just scratched and waited to get on the, the webinar. So I, I entered once we broke out of this zone. Let's see where we're at right now, actually. Okay, so you can see here, we failed at that um, absorption. So that was a zone I just showed you, an important zone from back in March. And you can see the absorption, tried to hold it, lost, it came back, it retested this absorption, and now it's now it's failing, right? So this is basically gonna be the last stop for this. Um, you see that, this blew through there, they held it up here, it came back up into here, failed. So if this blows through here, this is probably gonna come down and stop me out, I would guess. Um, but NQIs. we could get another leg of mine. So I'm, I'm just gonna keep my original stop in there because we still have to go through this absorption and get through this stop run area where guys get run over, right? So uh, I'll just keep this as it is, but I would not be surprised to see this kind of pause here and pull back. Then I will definitely be looking for more long opportunities if the real-time volume shows me as it pulls back. So I'll be looking for either absorption NQIs. that holds or icebergs or maybe a dumb and dumber stop run the other way, then I'll re-enter or I'll go full size again. Um, <clears throat> and then quickly, and I'll hop into these other markets, but you can see here, this was the, the entry was way back here on the breakout of that original balance area. This was yet another stop and hold multiple in a row here, right? So you can see this. This one was 241, huge, right? This is two and a half times my threshold that I look for. And you can see, so I drew this zone in and here's another one here, 173, that was up in this area. I just drew the first one, but you can see the zone held perfectly. These aren't coincidences why these why this stuff holds, right? The stop run fired off, guys got run over, comes back, guys are that got, you know, that had their seller sitting here. As it comes back, they peel out and it holds the zone and it turns into a stop and hold. And then you can see this is the area to enter right here. So you can see there's absorption. Here's the zone. Once it got above there, this is where you wanted to enter. You know, and then we had another one up here. So I got into the party late and now we're in, again, we're gonna probably struggle in here a little bit into this zone. I hope I'm wrong and it keeps going. Um, but um, so that was the thinking there. And I showed you guys the breakout of the, of the longer term zone. So that's why I am uh, long crude again i even if i get a short signal now um on, you know on the si indicators say something happens where it would be a, a normally a short i am not shorting this market and that's what i tell people that have purchased uh, my course is you don't want to just trade the si indicator setups in a vacuum right this isn't whoa sorry <laughs> hold on one second here this is a major, this is a breakout. You don't wanna be stepping in front of a breakout of a huge balance area, right? So even if I get a bearish setup, as we come into these zones, I'm not gonna turn around and go short, I'll get out of my long, but I'm not gonna go short until this is violated or say we drew another one over time and then we broke down out of that one, then maybe I'll consider it. But longer term, we're still big time bullish. All right, that's enough for crude. Let's take a look at uh, some of these other markets here. I'm gonna to try to show this big screen. Tell me what it looks like, Bruce, because my it hurts me to turn to the screen. It hurts my neck. So let me see if, uh, tell me what that looks like on your end. Maybe I'll try to present with all these screens here. We can cover a lot of stuff then. Wow, that... I mean, uh, yeah, we, we can see all three um, and then all the, all the smaller charts down below. Um, okay, the cool. resolution is very high though, so it's very difficult to, to see the, uh, numerical values oh so you can't see the numbers okay that's not, what I was not really okay um i wish these other screens worked okay um so i'll go back to this screen then any questions before i move on am i thinking there <clears throat> um <clears throat> let's see um no, Philip is just, he wants to look at gold, uh, but um, uh, I don't know if you want to explain a little bit um, about, you know, your strategy. Basically, um, Philip, I mean, Scott's looking for uh, some sort of, you know, skewed massive event that occurs with stop 
and icebergs, uh, and then he's looking at the order flow. So if he doesn't get a, an alert for gold, then he won't be looking at it, basically. Right. So I use my zones. Um, here, I think I'm on the wrong screen again. Hold on a so I use my zones, uh, you know, my prior zones, and then stuff, new stuff. I'll build new zones, and then I then I look for, you know, I base a thesis for the day, right? So I, you know, this morning I I open up my you know, I look at crude and I see we're breaking out, right? So I want to be long. Now I'm looking for areas to potentially be long, um, you know, based on my zones. And so if it rips through a zone, which it just did here, and then I got the stop and hold, that's, you know, now I'm looking what it does into this zone. So I use my zones either to fade trades or once they bust through to go with the move, right? And again, this is a go with the move type trade because we're breaking out. All right, so let's... Uh, Let's talk about equities here a little bit so you can see i know how shocking this is to any equity traders but we have done a rare bungee jump on a sell-off i think this is the first time this has ever had oh wait no it happens every single time we sell off so i actually thought today um i was short overnight i'm going to show you why i'm going to show you how prior areas from yesterday right at the close helped me i got long at the close and I held it all night and I knew I had a very good area that I was trading from and I'll show you that here in a second. But you can see here, we came right down to this zone. What was the zone? This zone was last time we came here, we put in a big buying tail, another big buying tail here, right? But the, you know, this was here before, what was the zone? This was the balance area. This was the top of the balance area, right? You can see resistance, 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 resistance. Then it was support, right? Once, once markets break through resistance, they become support. So you can see then it turned in support buying tail came down almost the exact tick another another bungee jump for the equities right so i will look for shorts into this zone now so i'm hoping we get up here while i'm on and i'm going to show you why one the zone's Thank important from before but then what happened yesterday it's even more important let's take a look at it here real quick see if it's firing off in there All right, so I know we're approaching some zones that I may want to short if some of this stuff starts to fail. So this is definitely threshold. So you can see here's an iceberg, a buy iceberg right here. It's 150, um, which is my threshold. I, I've upped my threshold a little bit. It used to be 100. I'm now I'm near 150. You can see here. So here's a good, good example right here. 223. Look at the look at the buy ice that came in here and held this market up, right? So again, I just don't I don't trade these in a vacuum. I look for certain areas to do this, but this is just a good example, right? So this was the buy I started, you know, threshold was basically right here, right? This was still buy ice, but it was a little less. This is the major buy ice. You can see, see all this red, they're trying to hammer down guys going to the market and they're running a hidden iceberg orders. And then they say, oh no, time to get out, right? So now what a good pattern is, again, I, I need to look at my zones here, but one of the Gray patterns is when it moves away, retests, you see the blue, you can get in, put your stop below here, right? So if you miss this breakaway from this iceberg, so many times, I, I mean, percentage-wise, I'd say 80% of the time, it will retest it in some capacity where you, and then you, you know, if it blood blows right through, no, you don't want to get long. But if you see this coming in this zone or just at the top, and then you see the blue come in, actually, I'll just take this trade um, because I'm not risking much just to show you guys I am, I do want to be long. I mean, I want to, uh, this is looking long, but we're approaching a zone that is um, a little, that I, I may want to short. So I'm getting long here. My stop is going to go below where this iceberg came in, right? So I'm going to put my stop right there. Again, this has kind of been in a vacuum. I'm going to show you guys here and see what it looks like on the longer term. Okay, so we're fine. So I was thinking we were closer to the zone. So I'm interested in shorting on a move back into the zone if if I get the real time volume confirming it. This is why you guys have such an advantage over bar chart traders, indicator traders, blah, 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 blah. Nothing means anything on these charts unless the real time volume is backing it up. Lines are lines. You want the, the real time volume backing up the trade, right? So this is not a, that important of an area where I'm afraid to go long. I will look into this zone to maybe take profit if this trade works. 
Um, and then I'm also, I won't be afraid to short this as well, because you saw this move down yesterday that just burned through all of these zones. That tells you something, right? I still think we may do one of these because of how the market went through the zones. So it's what happened, even though these didn't hold, um, actually it's because they didn't hold and it went right through. That tells you something, right? So it doesn't mean you just hop on, you know, short randomly, but as we come back, you should know we blew through all these zones with ease, like hot knife through butter. So that tells me something's changing in these markets, right? So I think we might bungee jump into one of these and I think that's gonna happen today. So we'll see, again, my opinion. Um, but right now I'm long, let's see if this holds. Again, this I put this on before I looked at that. This is not a terrible trade um, because this is large ice, right? So I wanna see this hold. Again, I just showed what this area is right and then you see this absorption too so you had icebergs absorbing then you had someone dropping in bids and they tried to hit into it and obviously this was all my my settings for uh, nasdaq absorption i think are 150 let's see here no only 100 so again i don't like to see this hanging here this thing this thing should have touched here and taken off uh, but again i'm not risking a ton on this trade NASDAQ terms, right? I'm risking what I get in run 05. I'm risking down to 91, 14 points. That's like a sneeze in the NASDAQ. So um, again, I didn't really want to get long this market. I wanted to wait until we got up here because what I just showed you, this tells me something. I'm going to show you an example in gold. When I, this finally happened in gold, then it turned into a down, longer term downtrend, right? This is not positive for NASDAQ. That's why I don't really want to be getting long. I want to wait to look for this zone to get short, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys how you can possibly trade these setups. You know, if this was a if this was a bullish scenario, I would I would love this trade, right? Like if this happened in crude, I'd absolutely love this trade. This is not a, a great area to to potentially be long, but that's fine. Where is my jar? Hold on a second here. So again, that was this. Right, we moved away, we retested, I got long here, stop goes below this area. So normally, so say this is a long setup and everything's lining long for me. If this comes down, because NASDAQ does this a lot, just like the thinner traded markets, like I said earlier with crude and gold, it will pop below and sometimes stop me out. And if it pops back into the zone, I will give it one more try and then put my stop in the exact same place. So say it pops all the way down to here and stops me out, I won't get back in the zone and then put my stop all the way down here. I will keep my stop in the same exact spot because in my mind, this should not come down again if I'm right, right? So you got to give it one more shot. Um, that's what I normally do in this situation. I'm not going to do that because I don't really want to be long per se in this area and I'm about to get stopped out, right? So again, bigger context tells me this is going to be a bearish market. You know, this is the bungee jump we got. Now, what you could do here, I don't want to do it because I want to put trade in my zones. Once this fails, that tells you something too, right? So if you want to, I just got stopped out there. So if you want to, you can short it and then put your stop above there. But again, this zone is not worth anything to me. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to let this play out. I took my shot on the long there for a quick, I was hoping we get a move back into this zone. I still think it's going to happen, but we'll let this play out. In, in my charts, this this area is nothing. Right, so I don't really want to play in areas that are not important. I just want to play in areas that are important. Why was this? Why is this next zone up important? We well, can see here. You had support, support. First, first it was resistance, 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 support, support. Buying tail, buying tail. Right, and then now we burn right through it. So I am. I would love this to come up here and then get a short signal, and then I will short this market. Um, so that's Nasdaq. I think I was showing you ES before that. Again, if this was higher, I would short this, especially on this broken ice. So this is this is a setup of broken ice, right? You had the iceberg take a stand, and now it's back through it. It's trying anyway. Once it moves a little lower, it'll be broken ice, and that's when oh, you nice. can get short and put your step above in a meaningful area. Okay, so ES. Um, so I was telling you about this zone yesterday or what happened here at the close yesterday. You can see it was a big selling tail. Um, second here, right here, right? So that's important. If you're, you know, if you're a bar chart trader, anyone can see this, you can see it failed in the zone uh, where it ripped right through yesterday. We talked about, 
I just talked about how when markets rip through important areas, that's that's good information, meaning this may be starting to turn um, bull or bearish, right? So overall, so now when it retested yesterday, that's exactly where it failed, put in a Sony tail. So what happened there where I was, I said, okay, I want to put on a short uh, overnight. This is the close yesterday. I screenshotted it for you guys. Well, look at look at all the volume. Now you tell me anybody trading a bar chart has any idea that this happened in this area, right? Look at look at this. It won't um, won't populate the the numbers for you because it's a screenshot. But this was almost 3,000 sell ice, and I drew the zone here. It actually started a little earlier than that because there was some bias here that was wrong. So I'd say right around 79, right where this absorption happened all the way down to 64 you had it just it just kept coming in right and you can see all the absorption these absorptions were set at 400 so these are all 400 absorptions you know coupled with this cell ice in this zone right so and then you see the buy ice come in at the bottom of the zone so this area was really really important overnight so when we right so we did this overnight for a while right and we came back up right at that Right at the um, open yesterday, we came back up in this area, and this is exactly where I shorted, and I put my stop a little bit above where this ice really started to come in um, because my zone was there. I'll show you that in a second. But you'll see, if you look at your charts, once we broke this area this morning, that was the acceleration. Why? Because guys that are loaded up here have to puke yeah. out their positions, right? So this is why I got in here. I know, again, if you don't have book map, you have no idea that this this kind of iceberg um, participation was in the zone, right? So now we where do we come back into that zone? This is right now, right? So it's not always what's right in front of your face, guys and girls, right? You wanna you wanna know these areas so you know areas to short, right? It's the same as me drawing zones. I wanna know, hey, there was a ton of of icebergs in this area and you can see we stopped basically i mean the top was like right here this is we stopped right in that in that iceberg zone right i hope i didn't miss a trade here i see a stop it looks like a dumb and dumber here let's take a look because i've been watering at the mouth to short this on this bungee jump 380 now so that's a little so my thresholds for um for es stop stops are 500 icebergs are 700 so i don't i rarely will take any type of trade if it's not at least those thresholds you know if it's a really slow day and we get like 460 or something i'll trade it like 460 stop run uh this is not a slow day so i'm not i'm not paying attention to anything until we see over 500 right so i'm going to let this thing play out a little bit scott can you show the settings on the uh, stop iceberg tracker like uh <clears throat> using yeah. some what summation uh are you using there yeah, so I'm using sliding mode. Sliding mode. So in my course, I use exponential, which is pretty close. Um, I'll even change it here to show you, right? So watch this iceberg here. If I change it to exponential, so you can see it, well, it's still forming. But it exponential is like a decay, so it still shows you the peaks, but it decays over a minute. The sliding shows you more the exact area um, of the of the real iceberg, right? It's not just a decay value. You can read all about that. Bruce can put that. Um, they got a whole wiki page about it. You can read about, you know, you don't want to confuse yourself. You just want to know that sliding is probably the best for if you're day trading, in my opinion. That's what I use. And, you know, icebergs are just hidden buy orders. So if it's above zero, they're hidden buy orders in the book. If it's below zero, they're hidden sell orders in the book. And you want to know where paper, because so most of the time icebergs are the big money, right? The, the, the smart money. You want to know where they're taking a stand. Um, and if they're right or if they're wrong, it doesn't mean they're always right. But when they're wrong, that's that's something to take note of too. You saw there at the end of the day yesterday, there were some icebergs, big buy icebergs down on the 65 area, right? And they ended up being wrong. We went up a little higher, but then when we broke it, that's what caused that move down to 50 this morning, right? That's the fuel. Guys that got long there have to puke out their positions. So it's just really good to know those areas. Um, so anyway, I have. Uh, 500 for the stops you can see here 700 this is awesome too this will read out when the icebergs because obviously i'm watching 20 different uh, futures markets at times 
So it'll read out S&P ice or um, S&P stop. You can put whatever you want here. You know, you can put stop run, you moron, or whatever, whatever you want to put. You can make it funny or whatever. But um, and then I set my stop runs at 10 seconds. And you want these uniform, right? So you can see up here. This this is the graphical stuff here. I got my stop run set at 10 seconds. My my icebergs will go up to a minute because you can see the icebergs sometimes take longer to form. You can see here yesterday. This was well over a minute as these icebergs came in, right? So I want to see see that I give it a little more time than a stop run. A stop run should be immediate, right? So 10 seconds is probably too long too. You should probably, probably have this at two seconds, right? So stop runs are 10 seconds, icebergs are at one minute, and then this is just your alerts and you want them obviously uniform. So it's reading off the chart stuff down here, right? That's what this stuff is set to. So I got 10 seconds and 60 seconds here. Um, and then I have what it's gonna read off to me. Um, and then also I've been getting a lot of questions about this. If you guys, um, the, the newest version has a couple bugs in it where it's not reading off all the alerts so you want to revert to the 3.0.0 i'm sure you can um you can google or uh, you can uh, email support at bookmap.com they can give you that or you can email me and i, I have a, a link for that as well for that download if you want to guys if you want to revert until they get that cleared up and they told me they let me know when they had that done um so those are my settings for that and then you can see here these are the alerts that fire off so I know, you know, what, you know, in case I'm missing, I forgot I even had that position. What's going on in crude here? It's kind of hard to pay, yeah, awesome. So there you go, guys. So this is still, I got up, but you know, again, I didn't get out of that, that initial two lot because I wanted to save money, right? I got out because I wanted, because I saw something that made me, um, no, I knew no. we were into a zone and I saw this, absorption start to fail, but you can see this one's still held. I guess I could have came a little bit lower, but I got out for a reason. I didn't get out because I wanted to, to you know, buy Christmas presents. And I needed the money, right? I got out for a reason. So now we're starting to head into another zone here. Where is my crude zone? Hold on one second. Just in case you guys jumped on this long, I want to make sure that everyone's seeing the same thing. Now we're into this zone. What's this zone here? Is this the same zone I showed? You know, we're pretty extended now from this balance area. I don't want to short it, but you could short, you know, if it, um, this isn't the right chart. Hold on a second. I had a chart that reached back like six months. Hold on a second here. I don't know what I did with that. Where I was showing you guys the zones, it's gone now. It's not cool. Oh well, I showed I showed you guys the zone earlier. So anyway, this is pretty far extended. So if I get any reason to cover this, I'm going to cover it. Meaning any real time volume. So here's a good example. One. Here you go. You got sell ice coming in now. Finally, right? First sell ice probably Ooh. threshold of all the whole day. So how you figure that out? You scrunch your chart and take a look. Look at that. First time paper starting to fight back. We have absorption here trying to hold it up. So if this starts to fail, I'm going to get out of the rest of this position. And then I'll wait for pullbacks to get long again, right? I'm not getting out again because I'm looking at my PL and say, oh, I want to save this thousand dollars. I'm getting out for a reason. I see sell ice taking a stand here. Um, again, they're not right yet, right? They're trying to hold this, and then buyers are trying to someone's trying to absorb it, absorb the selling, right? So you kind of have dueling forces, doesn't matter. It matters that there's a lot of volume occurring in this area that's worth noting, right? And I know I'm into an important zone. So if this fails, actually sell ice was over here. So let's draw this. So this is actually broken ice right now. So this is a bullish setup still. You can see here where this started, probably right around here. You can see my uh, cross here and went all the way to about there. So that's good to know, right? So right now, so this is the same setup I showed you guys. It was actually buy ice, but it's the same uh, principle, right? So this iceberg got run over, right? This is a perfect example of paper not always being right. So a, a, a big house came in or whatever, big trader, whoever had a sell iceberg in here that, see this big buying, this buying, this buying, it was running into this iceberg. And guess who won? The market buyers. And now we're ripping higher. So this provides fuel for the next move up, right? 
So this this absorption was probably some of this iceberg saying, mm, okay, please let me out, right? But a, a good a good um, uh, pattern again, 80% of the time you'll get one of these, especially when it's paper that's wrong, right? You'll get one of these, you'll get one of these retest, then it'll go. So what I'm going to do because I know we're at the top of that zone now, if this gets back below this absorption. I'm going to stop out and then I'm going to probably going to re-enter if we get back into this and I see a retest fail, then I'm going to get back in. Again, it's kind of a scalping, but I'm, I'm doing it for a reason, right? But I'm not just getting out blindly here. Look, this thing's just rolling. So let me see here. So what I'm going to do here is I will, if we get back below that absorption, I'm going to stop out there and then I'm going to watch to see how it reacts when it comes back to the I'll watch this, but I really want to re-enter back into this um, area where this iceberg got smoked, right? If I see something else happen, then I'll trail this up, right? So this is why you guys should be trailing stops, not because you want to save money. It's because I'm basing it on structure, right? So I trailed this stop up, cancel that. Why? Not because I like my profit. It's because I want to, I see a reason to get out if this fails right now. Right, I know my zone. I know this is the top of that zone from back in March, and I I know that this whoever absorbed this is now not winning anymore. It doesn't mean I'm going to get short, but I'm out for right now. That's how you trail your stops for reasons on the chart volume wise, not because you just want to trail your stop. The algos are dying for you guys to trail your stops in in insignificant areas, right? Because they love to do this nonsense, as everybody here who's ever traded knows, right? I mean, trades if you put on and you know you're long, and then you have to deal with this nonsense for, you know, I don't. Every webinar I've been on, we've had to deal with something like this, right? So when you trail your stops, that what do you think the algos are trying to do? They're trying to, you know, the algos see the same stuff we see. They see even more, right? So they know the areas where they can start playing games where paper is not, the big money is not participating, and that's why you get this. And if you're trailing your stop for no reason, you're gonna get stopped out 95% of the time, in my opinion. You know, from my experience. All right, so that's um, again. If I get something else, I'll trail it up. If I get an absorption that fails, I'll trail it up above there. But I'm just going to let this run now. If I get a bearish SI setup, so what you could have actually done here, what I should have done if I was on top of this chart, right? This is a perfect example of how if you guys catch a trend day, you can have a month making, year making day, right? So the first century was where. Right. And this is about trailing your stops and adding whole new positions. Right. This is, you know, I just got into this guy, but I should have added, but I'm going to show you this first. Right. So this was the first thing, stop and hold, we talked about. You enter, you enter right there. We broke out of that big balance area that we talked about. Then you get this one. Right. So what you do, so say your stop was here for this one, you move your stop up now below that. You enter again right there. So now you have two positions on, they're completely independent but you don't want to see the, the next area up violated. So now you, so you have your stop for this long in right here and you trail this stop up. Now you got two positions. Then you get a broken ice, another setup, one of the five, one of my five setups. What do you do? You enter once it busts away from there, right? And then you trail this stop up and you trail this stop up. Now you have three independent positions on. This thing keeps going. You're going to have a month making you're making trade, right? And you, there's no heat. Who cares if this thing comes back? You know, I'm I'm, I'm not going to trail these these stops up to say oh, I was long from down here. I'm I'm going to wait for something here. These are a little smaller, so I'm I wouldn't trail I wouldn't trail the big guys up or these these big profit makers up. I still keep them here until I see. Now, if I see something else, I'll do the same thing. If it's bullish, I'll add another position, trail them up. If it's bearish, I'll get out of everything, right? So, if I see if I see sell ice coming again, for instance, and it doesn't rip away, then I'm out. Then I, I'm out of all three positions right now. So, you know, hypothetically, pretend I have three positions, you should have three positions on without any heat whatsoever in, in this trade, right? Knowing we were breaking out, you know, of the, of the balance area, knowing the real time volume is supporting your breakout theory or your thesis, it's not a thesis, it's happening, right? And there you go. This is a huge, huge trade. You could have three units on, you know, so say you're just trading two lots. You could have six units on or six lots on, you know, we're, we're at a hundred tick, we're at a hundred ticks from your first, it's like a six, $7,000 trade. 
when you usually make $300 on a trade, right? I'm just giving you hypotheticals, but you can see how using real-time volume allows you to trail your stops, allows you to add to positions, and not just blindly. You tell me how you know on this chart where you want to be adding this trade. You're just going to guess blindly on the on this conviction bar. Okay, um, I like this one here. I mean, again, say you don't have these zones and you don't know these areas, and you're just you're just going to blindly buy. How many times have you seen, you know, breakouts are made to screw guys over, right? How many times have you seen this move, right? Or it does this, and then it pulls back a little bit, then it goes, right? This is this is a very rare. I'd say 20% of the time you get this beeline just straight, 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 straight without any type of pullback, right? But if you have the real time volume, the book met volume, you're on top of it and you're adding and you're you're crushing it. You have 100 ticks on on the first third. You have 50 ticks on your second third. You're you're looking at another 20. What are we here? Another 30 ticks on the, on the on the next third, and this is still going. There's still no reason to get out. So this is why I, I keep telling everybody, you know, on my webinars and anyone else in my trade rooms, if you do not have the real-time volume and this kind of information that Bookmap gives you, you do not have all the information. I don't. If you're successful, great. Just think how much how much more successful you could be if you have this information. Or you're seeing it here before your eyes, right? All right, so I may get stopped out of this uh, last two lot, and that's fine. If I so say this stops me out and it comes up and I get another bullish another bullish setup, well, I'll get right back in, right? What I want to see happen is if this does stop me out, I want to see it come back to some of these other areas, then I'm going to re-enter, right? Because that's the usual pattern for any of these markets, is you know rips, pulls back, then goes, pulls back, then goes, right? Any questions, Bruce? Yes, I, I've been answering a lot of them, and you just did a really great job there um, uh, answering them in, in a lot of detail and then some. Uh, so uh, so thank you for that. Um, really great stuff, uh, Scott. I mean, uh, to see, like, you know, how, how an expert manages uh, his trades. Um, a few questions. Um, one, Max is asking. Um, so, do you only use the SI tracker to uh, to trail the stops or also absorption? Uh, well, you know, I usually don't use absorption to trail. So, I just said that because they're more. You know, many times you're going to get the absorptions with this stuff too, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, because it does take into account the icebergs, but it's not the CME MBO data. So you can use the you can use this as absorption stuff with any data feed, which is, you know, guys that don't want to get the SI because they don't want to pay for the rhythmic data feed. The absorption you can get for any data feed. Um, it's a different type of algorithm that they're using. You can use it for stocks. You can use it for Bitcoin. You can use it for for anything. Um, but to answer your original question, I will not usually. I mean, if I see a bunch of absorptions, like kind of like I showed you. So this is a different story, right? Look at that. Look at these. Yeah, I'll I'll trail a stop if I see something like this and it gets below there. Absolutely, but usually I just rely on the SI indicator. Um, you know, an opposite setup. My one of my opposite setups, meaning once I get a bearish setup, then I'm out going this way. Again, you've got to trade this in context. Doesn't mean I'm turning around and going short, even though this is not the worst area to, you know, maybe try for a reactionary short. You see, look look where we're stopping right here, right at the top of the zone. But I, I don't want I don't want to fade, you know, a trending market, right? That's why you don't use this, this stuff in a vacuum. Use your common sense, okay? I know not everyone has 20 plus year experience trading. You don't need 20 year experience to trading to see that this market traded in a range and now we're breaking out. Why do you want to short this market? You don't want to short this market here. I mean, maybe something like that, yeah. Where you want to short this market is if this breakout starts to fail and we get below the high volume node of this um, of this area, then then you can short it. Uh, speaking of which, Bruce, I said this last webinar too. So I'm I'm doing a uh, we're doing a live webinar on Saturday, um, like a whole workshop um, with the We Trade Desk. I'm presenting in there. I'm showing how I draw my zones, the four reasons I draw my zones, and I go over all this stuff um, that I forgot to mention. So I'm going to put this in the chat, the uh, link to that, if you guys want to join in on that. I'm not sure the cost. I don't think it's too much, but there's like four very good presenters on the top of me in there. Um, 
Let me put this in here real quick. Yeah, please put put that in the chat. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Michael. I, I saw your question earlier. Don't, guys, I, if I if I don't get your question, then um, I mean I usually do, uh, but uh, yeah, type it in again here. Um, Michael's asking about when do you roll um, during rollover period? Are you waiting for the vols to turn over, or uh, you open interest, or what what exactly? Uh, um, um, it's actually very, very scientific, so very complicated. So what I do is I go to the CME website, and then I will go to markets, and then I will <laughs> – I'm, I'm being sarcastic. It's not. So then all I do is I just go to the – you know, you can start to tell. Um, you know, first of all, I'm in a chat room. I, I present in the we trade, room, we trade Desk room three times a week, so people are always talking about it. But what you do is you just go to the product and you look and you say, okay, what product has the most volume, right? So I know I know as we roll, like crude, crude's a good example. Let's go to crude. As we roll, it'll be like 50-50. I'll stay on the prior month until the, the new month has the majority of the volume, right? So you do this and then you look here, right? So you can see February starting to creep up, right? So again, not technical at all. I was being trying to make it funny, right? But you see 200 and 221,000 contracts. So why is this not working? Because I have the eraser on. 221,000 versus 70,000, right? So when this starts to, you know, as we get closer to the rollover date, I don't even know the date it is, but you, you'll start to tell because you also start to get less setups too because the, obviously the volume isn't as strong in that market on my SI stuff. So I'll start to notice there. Um, but, you know, I, I just am aware of these markets. And when I see like, you know, 100,000, 100,000, then I'm like, okay, probably tomorrow I'm going to roll. I still keep it on the on the prior month, but then when this starts to, you know, then this turns to 120 versus 80, then I'll switch over to Fed. So again, not scientific at all. I know. I don't know this, it's you. very proprietary. You might want to patent that. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Use your eyeballs and look at what has the most volume. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, some of these, some of these are, don't roll for three months at a time, right? Every quarter, the, the markets like crude and um, like natural gas. I think natural gas does monthly as well. Um, you know, just keep an eye on it. You, you, you know, when if you're trading these markets enough, you know, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's see a few more questions uh, since we got you here. Um, uh, if, what are your settings on the ES for the absorption indicator? And and Jill, um, they um, they will change like even between uh, you know uh, morning and uh, afternoon. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, you, you need Bruce to play changed, around with I don't, that. I don't change it. I don't change it very often, Bruce. Okay. Um, so I, I just leave especially ES because ES, if you could believe it or not, the market that I made millions of dollars in is my most hated market. I, I seriously want to punch my screen most of the time I'm trading it. So I just leave it. Mine are set at 400, and I leave it that way. Um, meaning I don't even I don't even want to play games with it unless it's it's trading 400. So I have 400, one second, same price. Um, so same price just means that it won't won't draw the absorption unless all that volume happened at one price. Because if you go to if you take same same price off, you'll see this here. Let's see if this works. Yeah, see that that's not helpful to me. So that means 400 traded over a second over all of these prices like that. This is this is just too much, right? I don't want to signal that fires off 45 times a day, right? Same with the SI indicator. That's why I have thresholds, right? I know what's important, what's not. I don't want to be taking trades that I see this the SI indicator firing off 22 times. I want to see, so if you, you know if your settings are correct in the SI, if you're only seeing a fire off three, four, five times a day, you don't want to see much more than that, right? Unless it's a very active day. Let me put this back here. So again, you know, the absorption is basically like an iceberg. It's just someone just throwing in, you know, orders. So you can see, look at this one. It was really nice, right? Came down. You can see the big red bubble, the market sellers. Somebody said, yeah, I'll take those. Um, and then you can, you know, you can mess around too on certain days. Like Bruce said, you can, or certain times a day, you know, if, if it's when it's dead, you just start playing around with this. Make it, you know, 600. See if that's the, see if that's a good threshold for the day, right? See if that still stayed in there. No, just disappeared, right? So that's too much. You see, there's none on the chart, so that's just too much. Let's try 500. Must be nice. Nope. 
so 400 400 is a good again i'm going to come out with a course with this stuff too with setups and everything else i just i need to I need to watch it and back test it and stuff because uh, it's brand new you know it's been out a week and a half i've had it um so i want to um i want to really start to see the tendencies and when you use it when you you know you don't jump on things kind of like the si indicator right you don't want to be using it in a vacuum you want to be waiting for overall context let me turn this off for now um but yeah so those are my settings for that okay else uh, yeah adam's asking about like uh when we're at all-time highs uh like some of these stock indexes uh, how, how do you handle that do you just look at some of the bigger figure numbers or um you know, that's exactly where you want the real-time volume, right? I mean, you're, that's exactly it, right? So you, you know, you're trading all-time highs, you're up here. What, how do you know, like, what, there's nothing to trade off of right here, right? I actually need to draw zones for this too. Um, why? One, because this is, again, I'm going over this Saturday too, more, way more in depth, but, you know, this is obviously the hot. And then what else is this? This is where... Why is this not trying for me? There we go. I'm sure there's a faster way to do this, but I'm not uh, very technical. Um, because this is where this huge conviction move started, right? That's very, very, very important. I can show you 20 of them on the chart where you see that's where this started. So I can, I'll bet anybody anything, next time we come up to this area, there will be a reaction. Right. If there's not, then that's really good information. But 95% chance because of what happened here, which I just showed you guys, why I'm starting to really start to think this could be the top because of. Oh, I wanted to show you guys the gold too, uh, the exact example I'm talking about here before I hop off. But and Adam, uh, also he's going to be looking. Of course, I mean, one of the beauties of the heat map in the full depth of market is look at look at where the liquidity is, not just the big figures, but where the liquidity is. Right. Well, my, yeah, my point is, I guarantee you, I don't have the chart. This is from yesterday, but um, something happened up here volume wise. So that's how you know because you can only you don't have anything to go to prior prior structure, prior zones, prior anything, right? So that's when you you let the real time volume tell you, okay, this is the top, this is the top, right? So anyway, because we blew through all these zones, just right through hot knife through butter, right? When it takes, it's almost impossible for this thing never to sell off. That's very good information. Now, again, we're getting closer to this zone. I got stopped out of that, that small long I tried, but I'm watching intently back into this zone. That zone is, you know, 12, 12, 450, 12, 460 to 12, 448. I will be watching for any kind, if I get anything, I'm talking absorption, that fails, I'm talking SI indicator. And here's another thing too, guys, we talked about this and I've talked about this in about every webinar I've ever done for a book map. Liquidity, long-term liquidity in the book is a magnet, right? That's the big money that almost always gets, they always get their way, but it, sometimes it's not right away. But you can see now as we come into that area, this is the exact area I just showed you on the chart. This is not coincidental. Look at the, look at what's sitting up here. Right, you had this band. This came in pretty much right after they open. All this liquidity, and that's all within that zone. Once they these paper gets their fills, that you know you play it up. Mm -hmm. So say you wanted to get long down here, you had a setup. Your target should be this liquidity. Yeah, I have a zone there, but I'm also paying attention again to real time volume. Look at all this liquidity. This is big money that wants to get filled. They will get this market up there. I, I use this example all the time. This used to be me. I think I talked about this last webinar. I would put, say, this is the mini SP. I put 500 in the order book 500, 500, 500, 500. Then I'd start buying down here, right? Then I get guys to jump in. Guys would be, oh, look at big papers buying because you couldn't tell anything back then, right? This was just all order flow. Then I get a cascade of buying behind me, and then would run it right into my orders to either get out of my longs or initiate shorts. That's exactly what's going on here, guys. Trust me. And we talk about it all the time. Go watch my prior webinars. These are such great areas. One for targets if you do to get long down here, or once this gets taken out, once it fails back down great short and that's going to be confluent with that zone and if i get something on the short side it's going to be just like a triple whammy where you get you get everything you get the paper got their fill it failed below back below it you get a si indicator set up boom mm -hmm. so that's how i trade that um i want to show you one quick thing 
on that, but always pay attention on liquidity. You don't always get it so such clear cut in uh, these futures like uh, ES and, and Q. That's why sometimes I will use, I've talked about this on many webinars too, I'll use the SPY and the um, and the Qs to, to kind of judge a little better. I'm having this problem with the SPY. I don't know why it won't load for me there. Hold on one second here. Let's look at Qs. You know why it does that, Bruce? Like, it won't load to the regular price. I don't know why it does that. Uh, that is odd. It, it, yeah, it's not. There's maybe a DX feed issue there. I'm I'm not sure. Sometimes I have to like X out of it and then reload it. But mm. so, so I do this sometimes too, right? So that, look how much clearer this clearer this is than than this, right? Because you got all the algos playing games in here. This just tells me, okay, look at this big band. Look when it came in. It's been here all day. There's a, I put it at 80% chance this comes up here, which is confluent with that zone and futures. They get their fill, and then there we go, right? Yeah, it, um, it's fascinating. Uh, uh, you know, and these are important levels uh, in the queues and, and SPY as well. Uh, that was verified earlier in the week with uh, Brent uh, Kachuba was talking about those uh, options levels, uh, in fact, uh, on those instruments. Right, yeah. Spot gamma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Spot Gamma, guys, I highly recommend you get to. Again, I have no real no affiliation with them except for using them, but they really help you um, know where options dealers are going to be hedging their positions with futures, right? That is market moving information. I don't know why it's not in here. I had it for NASDAQ um, as well, uh, but you get them for NASDAQ, Russell, E mini. You can see here, here's some levels here when you do it like this. You just know where. So if we happen to get back up in this area, right? You, this is not, this is going to be resistance because you have options dealers hedging their positions up at these prices, right? And same with down here. There's a little couple little guys here, but again, go to a site. It's very technical. It's a lot of it's over my head. I, I don't claim to be some wizard at the options. I all I want to know again. Anybody that's ever watched my webinars, you know, I keep things stupid simple, right? And that's what helps me, you know, be successful is because I don't confuse myself, right? Don't confuse yourself with 45 things on your chart. Just know, hey, or try to really, really, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I don't care why, what and why. I just know these are important levels. That's it. That's a resistance level, just like a line on a chart, right? Um, okay, quickly, what I wanted to show you guys about burning through levels, how it forecasts what's going to happen going forward. Um, so this is gold, which is in the downtrend. Right? We talked about this market last week. I hate this thing. Why can't I don't understand why I can't go back? I guess we'll do it this way, but I don't know why I can't. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. I mean, for what I want to show you guys. So. The exact thing that just happened in NASDAQ yesterday, right? So this was, you know, it wasn't it wasn't as large of a balance area, but the point is it blew through a lot of important zones. We've talked about this before too, but I'm just gonna go over one more time. So you see this monster balance area, right? Built another balance area on top of a balance, looks just like crude, right? That's why it should have done this. What did it do? It did not do that. It failed and then look at what it did through all of these important zones, all of these, like these are going back, even some of these are going back before this balance area, right? The point is, it doesn't matter what they're, what they are. It matters. We just blew right through them and you can see, try to hold no dice. Every time it rallies, it gets smacked down, right? So again, this foretold you, foretold that something was, was amiss in gold that you don't want to be, you want to just be looking for shorts and, and important areas, right? And you can see every time this thing rallies, it'll rally. But once it gets to these important areas where that balance area was and where that conviction bar blew through everything, that's where it can't go any higher, right? So until we can get back above this stuff, favor shorts and gold. So that's what I was trying to show you guys with NASDAQ. That was a change in character for this market, right? 
when does it really he had one here and then it, you know then it tried forever and then it finally got above it but this is telling we blew through these important zones i am still looking for shorts if we get back above again you know sometimes you're going to have a thesis of what what is happening again my thesis is this is pretty much going to be it i think we may start you know start moving down for once instead of bungee jumping every single day um but you know if this does somehow some way i know it's impossible for equities to do this but if it did do it then that tells you something we're still bullish right but i'm playing this as i'm going to be fading any one of these zones if i get my real-time volume setups so that's what i wanted to show you guys in the nasdaq all right bruce we're close to the time any other questions <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. Uh, busy answering a bunch of them. Um, no, I think we're pretty good. Uh, followed up with everything here. We got all your settings, uh, et cetera. Uh, and um, yeah, you've been going over an hour now, uh, Scott. Um, really great. Uh, as always, I mean, it's always great. Um, I, I just, I love the simplicity and the um, expertise at, at, at uh, not just the set of us, but really the trade management is just, it's awesome. Um, uh, very, very helpful uh, for all of us, I think. Well, it's awesome because it's real-time volume, book map telling you how to manage the trade. It's not me. I'm, I'm going by what I see, right? And again, if you guys are trading just off bar charts or whatever you're trading off of, if you're not using real-time volume, you just do not, you don't have all the information. I don't care how successful you are. You do not have all the information, period. And if you add it, just imagine, if you're already successful, just imagine if you have this in your arsenal, where you know where the big money's playing, where the big money's wrong, where the you know, stop runs fired off and held. Just imagine how lethal you can be as a trader have adding this into your arsenal. Like this, this is it. This is why markets move, guys. It's not lines on a chart, right? It's not my zones, it's not anything else. Yeah, those were important areas where things happen, right? But lines on a chart indicators, you know, Fibonacci, uh, moving averages. Yeah, they're significant. They're only significant if real traders, large traders participate in those areas, right? If, if, otherwise, they're meaningless, right? So th the whole point is you want to be using real-time volume to determine if your area, again, you don't have to draw zones like I do. Um, you know, I highly recommend it. But if you don't, use whatever you want to use. Say I, I only trade, a, you know, you're a trader. I only trade off the 200-day moving average. Great. Wait to get your confirmation here. Kind of like I was telling you guys, I wanted to be bullish, right? So say we're pulling back. So say this is the 200-day moving average, right, right here, and you want to be a buyer because we've been trading above it, and you want to buy the pullback to the moving average. You want to see something occur either here or absorption to confirm your bullish thesis that we're going to bounce off the moving average. If nothing happens, the moving average doesn't mean anything, right? You want to see the big money backing up your thesis of the market. And that's exactly what I do with my zones and my structure and everything else. But you can use this stuff with whatever you use, right? Yeah, yeah, no, excellent. I mean, um, a, a few questions here I need to answer. Um, uh, Scott, sure. I mean, if you if you want to take off, it's fine. Um, no, but it's fine. Uh, regard, it's regarding the- Once in Arizona, <laughs> so I'm not play golf today, which is not cool. <laughs> okay. But I might catch uh, yeah. a good short of the NASDAQ, so it might not be a bad thing. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, regarding uh, Derek, the uh, SI indicator, um, uh, it works. It's it's sold separately on the Bookmap Marketplace. It works with Global or Global Plus. It does not matter. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of people are using it. I mean, you know, the the funny story I have with Scott was um, I kind of mentioned this indicator. I say, wait till you see this. You, you're going to be amazed. Um, I've, I've never seen anything like it. And he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, like an indicator. Uh, and, um, uh, they told me for like I, over a year, I never, yeah, yeah, I mean, several months. I was like, it's coming out soon. Don't, you know, it's gonna, you're going to be blown away. And like, um, he's like, yeah, whatever. So then it came out and I explained it to him. And then I didn't see Scott for like three weeks, two or three weeks. Uh, he went back and, and back tested and studied, uh, and then came up with, his his strategy so it's very specific what he is doing with it yes derek we do cover it in the uh webinars but we cover many things in the webinars 
Okay, this new uh, um, uh, absorption indicator has also been uh, just fantastic. I, I really like it. I've been covering it a lot during the webinars. So uh, we'll, we'll cover these things. You can ask questions in it. I mean, you can see this is like today, what Scott is presenting is part of the uh, weekly uh, webinars or daily webinars, like one day a week, Scott presents. Okay, so this, this happens every day. I mean, not uh, every week it happens. Um, so that's that, uh, guys. I put the, yeah, the, the other thing too, uh, Bruce. Quickly is I, I get emails. Hey, how do I get your indicator? Mm -hmm. So it's not my indicator. I didn't. I, I'm not a programmer. I didn't design it. Bookmap programmers designed it. Um, I made the course on how I trade it with five specific high probability setups. So that's what that's what I put out there, you know, it's on the Bookmap Marketplace or my website, you can get that. So it's it's a course on how to trade these setups, right? And But I the, the indicator is not mine, the course is mine and how I actually trade with it. And I explain all five setups and, you know, for, for you guys to learn. So I just want to clarify that. Okay, okay, uh, excellent. Um, uh, By the way, see... just quickly, ahead. before the next question, you can see, it came up again, guys. Same exact problem. It can't get through this area. This was yesterday at the close, right? So this is another thing where you can just start mapping this, right? So you know, people and I and I was doing it too. Like you, you look at the markets and you say, oh yeah, that was a balance area. Or, you know, even with market profile, right? So market profile takes into consideration the, um, you know, I'll show you this quickly. Market profile showed you obviously time, time. Everyone, almost everyone who trades is familiar with market profile, right? So I draw these composites when days merge the value areas, which is just 66% of the volume for that day. When they merge with other days, I'll merge those days and draw a composite and draw the, the, the blue areas, what that is. So yeah, you know, everyone can see this is, you know, this was a big, this was a big um, value area here. Whoops, that we broke down from, right? And then we, try to get back through here yeah you know you know these areas but you do you really know this area do you really know what happened in this right here this is what happened in this right if you don't have book map you don't have the si indicator you have no idea that this happened yesterday so start taking get the si indicator and take notes pay attention to these areas because guess what we've just come up to this area two different times and we can't get through it why it's because of what happened yesterday there is some serious commitment in this area, serious. This was 3,000 sell icebergs. This is another 2,000 buy icebergs. That That is commitment in this area, right? So when we come back to that area, that's why we keep failing in the area, right? From what I just showed you. So if you have a bar chart, great. Yeah, you're looking at that. You're like, oh yeah, we have a selling tail. You have no idea that this area probably had the most contracts I've ever seen at the close yesterday. And that's probably another question you guys are thinking always oh, because we, it was at the close. Yeah, you get a lot of absorption and stuff at the close. Um, you know, you'll see this a lot, not this much, but you'll see a lot of that's this is this is way out of the ordinary, right? To see five thousand plus con icebergs firing off in one area, that's that's important information. And then what do you what do you know? This is where we can't get through. So if this thing starts to break down. You can short it knowing, hey, I got all these committed traders that guys that were caught and that it's got to really have some some kind of force to get through this area again. You know, you have that information on your side for a short, right? Yeah. What were you saying, Bruce? Sir? Yep. No, excellent. Excellent. I mean, uh, that it's just, it's, um, Again, like uh, what I, I I keep on reiterating, um, I think uh, for a lot of people who uh, maybe see your um, uh, kind of method for trading here uh, again and again, that um, it's he's looking for a major event, and then he's looking for the order flow around those events, uh, and he knows the order types because of the SI tracker. He knows the order types that are in the order flow. So that that's a that's some insight. That's an edge, uh, but. If if you don't have that edge or you're not looking yeah. for that, it's then the big edge, just, biggest edge you, you can have. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, a, it, but it's really like it, the market is event driven, um, and Scott is looking for that big event, uh, and he knows he knows what you know. It's either stops or icebergs or both uh, that he's looking for. So that that's um, um, as he as he just um, I think really nicely explained that at the close yesterday. Right. Exactly. That's what. So again, I came up with five specific subs. So 
again, it's not hypothetical stuff that that the course is based off of. It's based off of me. That's the advantage you guys get. It's not some just, you know educator out there that just comes up with some pulls some crap out of his hat. Pardon my language, and just thinks let's let's see if this works, right? I was that big trader. I know what I went through when I got run over and it would, I would get run over on a, you know, on a say this is sell iceberg was me, right? I, I didn't trade icebergs, but I would trade the absorption. I got run over, say this is me, right? And I'm trying to buy it and it blows right through. I'm praying, I, I literally would be praying to God. I mean, you gotta remember I was trading thousand lots, right? So I'd have like 2000 contracts on, this would be me absorbing and it would rip right through here. And I literally, I'd be looking at my, my P and L and I'd be down like 170 grand. My phone would be ringing from my risk manager. What are you doing? You got to get out. And just like, just give it a second. Just praying it would come back to this area so I can scratch the trade, right? So my point is, the the five setups are based on my experience as a large player in the markets, knowing how I would react, knowing what I would see from other large players, knowing what I would see from retail traders, the smaller guys. That's what it's based off of. So when you learn the setups, you can go into these markets with confidence, knowing that that I know what I'm talking about because I used that used to be me, right? So that's that's what it's based off of. <clears throat> All right. Um yeah, um, excellent stuff, guys. I, I answered all your questions in here, I believe. Um, so uh, if I didn't, uh, you can always reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, I put the link in there several times for um, Scott's contact information if you want you know, further education with Scott. Um, some of the deals, et cetera, uh, are also in that quickly, link there. Sorry, just quickly, Bruce. This is exactly what we call, right? Now watch, watch this. Now paper's starting to get their fills. Just like I said, because they always get fills because they do what they want to do because they they run the markets. Look at the stop run, 189. This is about to become a dumb and dumber. Yeah, I wish it would have filled this liquidity, but this was the liquidity that was in here the longest. So this could be that zone that I showed you, pretty pretty darn close, right? Right there. If this fails right here, this is a dumb and dumber setup, meaning you had a retail trader puke no real buying behind it again so if you're this paper here they had the opportunity with this with this stop run to push this right into their orders for them not to be able to push it up there tells you there's no real buying behind this if this goes a little lower let me draw this zone just before we get up so you guys know where it's at because i will be shorting this Let's say it started hold on a second here so you did want to do this too i think i'm already missing this trade but i want to show you guys here Why is this not? Hold on one second. There we go. Yeah, I just missed this trade. Right here, guys. So you can see here. We'll put it right here. So that's where it basically started up to here. So that was a dumb and dumber. Here we go. So I'm going to short this. I can find my thing. Right there. Stop goes above there. Again, this, you know, if this comes up and stops me out, I get another one, I'm getting right back in. Why I, we just talked for an hour why I want to be short this market, right? And I'm playing this dumb and dumber. If it comes up, the only my only worry right now is this liquidity. The paper may push it up here, but they had a chance there and they didn't. If I get stopped out, so say, so this is a good example. This comes up and stops me out and it gets back below the zone. I will try it one more time. Or what I would, you know, if I do get stopped out, I'd love to see one more of these dumb and dumbers or um, a Titanic, a cell iceberg or something up in this area. I'm still shorting it, right? What we just talked about. I showed you the zones. I showed you why this should fail. Um, yeah, put on my other accounts too. All right, sorry, Bruce. I just wanted to point that out because that's uh, we've been waiting for that, waiting for that all webinar. Um, whether that's the exact high, it's pretty going to be pretty close. So we might get one more try up, but nice. Okay. Okay, sorry, Bruce. All right, no more interruptions. I just wanted to point that out. This is exactly how you guys trade it. Look at that. I mean, again, if it fails, we'll give it one more shot.
All right. Anything else, Bruce? No, no, I think uh, that's it. Um, um, so uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up. You've been going for, uh, you're always very generous, Scott. Thank you. Uh, it's an hour and 20 minutes here. Uh, let's wrap it up and uh, we'll see you next Thursday. Uh, everyone else, um, the all these ProTrader webinar recordings uh, will be available on our YouTube page. You'll see it there. Uh, and uh, again, you have all of Scott's contact information and, and that coupon code in the uh, in the chat if you if you want to uh, try try Bookmap out. Um, all right, I think that that's it, uh, and uh, we'll we'll catch up you, with you uh, on Thursday, Scott. Thanks, Bruce. Again, you guys that mirrored this trade, this is a good area. Again, we weren't quite into that zone. Um, you know, if we could do go a little higher, I would have loved to see it in this zone. But sometimes you don't always get what you want, right? So. If we get one more into the zone, that would be even better, and we'll fill out liquidity. But this might that might be it. This might be the the turn down now. But keep an eye on Nasdaq. That's my my most watched market right now that I'm looking to. And I'll add. You guys want to add if you start seeing your SI indicator setups, just like I showed you in crude. If you start this starts moving lower and you start getting bearish setups, add to it. Trail your stop. All right. All right. All right. Excellent. All right. Thanks. Thanks everybody, and we'll uh, we'll catch up tomorrow to to. Um, uh, finish up the uh, ProTrader webinar, uh, and um, uh, until then, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. See you next Thursday. Bye.